does not have a special women's criminal investigation department. But there's a big hand-picked group of women detectives. They are trained from the ranks of the Uniform Women's Police and to be transferred to Scotland Yard is considered a great honour. ...that you have been seconded for work at the CID. I don't need to tell you that this will give you an opportunity of showing the qualities of self-reliance and initiative. Thank you, sir. I think you'll like the work and I hope the Yard will like you. Good luck. <laughs> And what is that work? It can mean adventure and sometimes danger. Listen to the story of Rose, for that's the name by which we've called her. She was a woman detective at Scotland Yard. Just before World War II, the activities of the Irish revolutionists were occupying the attention of the special branch of Scotland Yard. From the information at our disposal, we're confident that the men we want are living together at this house in the Euston Road. They are the ringleaders of the plot. However, the evidence we have isn't merely sufficient for us to take action. We've got to get someone inside this house. Yes, sir. I believe you spent some years of your life in Ireland. Can you still put on an accent? Sure, no, and I can't, sir. How's that? <laughs> Sounds all right to me. But it had better be good. They put an advertisement in the local tobacconist for a daily maid. I think they're likely to favor somebody from Ireland. You are going to apply for the job. I hope I get it. So do I. If you don't get it, it won't be for want of good references. <laughs> I've just written them myself. <laughs> and uh, here are my references, sir. I hope I'll get the job. My mother needs the money, and, and being Irish, I thought you might say yes. And why should you be an Irish make any difference? Well, you're Irish yourself, are you not? Ah, uh, that's true. Do you know what the work is? To help in the house, I expect. Uh, that's the idea. You'll do the daily work, and you'll wait at table, and any odd jobs. Can you keep your mouth shut? Why, yes, sir. And you better keep a still tongue about anything you hear in this house. You can start the pound a week, and you keep. You can start Monday. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much indeed, sir. That's <laughs> 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 just about the idea. Everything's set now, and the rest's up to you. Now, you all know what you have to do. Hush, man, the girl. Oh, she's all right, aren't you, Rose? I'm sure I don't know what you mean. Rose is no fool. I'll tell you this. She's the best man we've ever had. A good worker and a good girl. Oh, Rose. She's a perfect treasure. I don't know what we'd have done without her. Oh, I'm going on to the door. That's a good girl. Oh, now, whoever it is, we're not in tonight. Very good, sir. I wonder whoever it's going to be. I'm a woman to touch this house. Stand back. Oh! Rose was certainly a good girl. She'd spent six weeks in that house in the Euston Road, and the information she'd given while serving table for the ringleaders in the plot was enough to put them all in prison and to smash up the whole organisation. The nice thing was that the plotters never even knew that Rose was not all that she seemed, the perfect servant. Of course, the last thing we want our women detectives to look like is detectives. One woman detective from the yard, in the course of shadowing a suspect, adopted a variety of disguises. An old woman, a nurse with a pram, the baby in which, incidentally, she'd borrowed from the, for, for the purpose from the wife of a yard constable, a woman newspaper seller, a smart young typist, and on one occasion, a shambling middle-aged man. Uh, here's another story from the files of Scotland Yard. The period, London, a few years ago. 
Of all criminals, the hardest to catch and often the cleverest is the receiver, the man who makes his profits from the risks taken by the smaller fry of the criminal world. We've had these premises under observation for the past six months. They're in Frith Street in Soho. So far as we can ascertain, there are four men and five women in this gang. I think not only are they receiving stolen goods, but they're also sheltering service deserters. This is a very bad neighborhood, which makes it all the harder to keep under observation, particularly at dark during the blackout. Why don't we try raids, sir? Oh, that's not much good. We'd probably pick up the women, but the men would be too cute to be caught. All they would do would be to shut up shop and move on somewhere else. What we need is a volunteer. A woman who is prepared to conceal her identity and to go to live in Soho to mix with the lowest type of criminals and to get information. We shall need volunteers for this job. And from those volunteers, we shall have to pick somebody who's brave and intelligent. Want to see me, sir? That's right. Sit down, will you? You were among the policewomen who volunteered for a special assignment. Yes, sir. You know what the job is about? Only what's said in the notice, sir. Yes, I think you might be the type. You see, what we need is not only an intelligent girl, but uh, one who is good-looking. Thank you, sir. And not afraid of danger. Are you afraid? Well, if you mean, am I afraid of mice? Yes. <laughs> that doesn't mean a thing. The best women police officer we ever had spent six months working alongside a murderer, and when the whole job was over, she told me the only time she was really frightened was when she found there were rats in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's get out of business. You're going to live in Frith Street, Soho. You're going to make yourself look like the cheapest kind of criminal associate, a poor man's gangster's mall. You're going to live in Soho for months. You're going to mix with the worst kind of people. It'll be weeks, perhaps... Three months before you'll get results. You might never get results. Oh, point, please, miss. Hello. Hello, dear. Didn't think I'd see you tonight. Oh, it's cold, isn't it? Give me a whiskey. Oh, yes, please. Two whiskeys, please, miss. Come out, Doc. Here, you look worried. Anything the matter? Yes, it's my room. The roof leaks. It's awful. There's about uh, half an inch of water on the floor. Honest? Too bad, dear. What are you going to do? I don't know where I'm going to spend the night. I think it'll be all right. Only for tonight, though. Give me extension, 88. Mrs. Denner here. I can't say much, but 10 o'clock tonight will be a good time. 10 o'clock tonight it will be. Right. amount of booty, the result of a score or more of London robberies that had been marked off on the list of unsolved crimes. And as for the woman police officer, she went back to another job, more pleasant, but not as exciting as her brief experience as a gangster's mall. So much for the moment concerning the women of Scotland Yard. Now, let's take a look at this subject from another angle, the angle of the lady who is a crook. Ever heard of the 40 elephants? No, well, they're no relation to the 39 steps. But if you're talking about women criminals, this program wouldn't be complete without the 40 elephants. Let me tell you about them. Elephant and Corso! All change for the Bakerloo line! Elephant and Corso! Find the doors! in South London, which had given its name to a railway station, a district, and indirectly to a notorious gang of women criminals, the 40 Elephants. It was an apt name, for most of them were outsized women. One of them, in fact, was almost six feet high. 
They were the toughest bunch of hardened crooks ever known in the experience of Scotland Yard, and every one of them was a woman. The 40 elephants had a definite line of their own. They specialized in blackmailing young crooks, particularly the young crooks whose hunting grounds were the West End clubs and smart hotel lounges. They had an uncanny knack of finding out just what jobs were being pulled off, who was in them, and just what the loot amounted to. Even the young male crook working on his own and fondly believing that what he was up to was his own secret would wake up one day with a shock to the realization that his activities were an open book to this band of tough, heartless women. The elephants wouldn't beat about the bush. They'd come along with a blunt demand for a percentage of the loot. This or that young male crook had managed to acquire by his roguery and the gang's knowledge of just what that loot really amounted to would prove to be startling in its accuracy. Failure to hand over the demanded percentage would bring threats that he'd be given away to the police. If he just laughed at that, the young crook would find the elephants had another and much better card to play. One evening, a young crook was walking home late at night when... Oi! Oi, you! What's the matter? Come here. You, what are you up to? Hey! Hey! Sergeant Douglas here, sir. Oh, yes, Sergeant. Far away. It's murder, all right, Inspector. There's a knife right through his throat. We've been through his papers, and I think we know who did the job. The 40 elephants. of investigations produced immediate results. We found the 40 Elephants one of the best organized gangs we had ever encountered. They didn't confine themselves to blackmail and violence. They weren't above doing a bit of well-planned shoplifting from some of the West End luxury stores. But blackmail was their main line. Some of the women were really attractive under the bright lights of London's nightlife. They would act as decoys with the netting of some luckless young visitor with money to burn. Once hooked, He'd either become a victim for straight old-fashioned blackmail or be enticed to a spot where other members of the gang would beat him up and rob him at their leisure. Put on. They were four of them. Blimey, it was awful. Great big women. All right, all right, we know. Question is, did you recognize any of them? No. I never saw any of them before in my life. That was just the trouble. Every lead the police had to the 40 elephants came to a dead end. Because the very men who could help the police were frightened of the consequences. There's an old adage, set a thief to catch a thief. And the Yard has an equally sound maxim, set a woman to catch a woman. There are Yard detectives I know who shudder at the very thought of women crooks. Skilled questioners as they are, they know by experience how very difficult it is to get any real information from a woman crook, even though she's fallen into their hands. For nine times out of ten, she'll lie and bluff her way so effectively through his maze of probings that at the end of it, he'll have hours of worry, wondering whether, after all, he's not slipped up and made a wrong arrest. There's none of the male's traditional, it's a fair cop, acceptance of the situation about the average woman crook. Her guileless or, it may be tearful eyes and unshakable denials, will often tend to shake an experienced officer's belief in the accuracy of his own personal observation. All right, I'll see her now. This way, from there. Sit down. There's no good you asking me questions. I know your kind. Do you? Have a cigarette. You were arrested last night, weren't you? Well, you shouldn't have. I was walking down the street. I've never been picked up by the police before. And yet you said you knew my car. Well, I, I... Well, anyway, what's it got to do with you? Oh, nothing. You've been shopping, I gather. Why? 
Well, the contents of your handbags, these. Well, I bought them. Did you? You should have made the shop wrap them up. Well, they're short of paper. Not that short. And then you see there's somebody who saw you take them. Well, I didn't, so there. Of course, if you'd only been shoplifting, you'd probably only get 28 days. It's a pity it wasn't serious. What do you mean, serious? Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm not supposed to tell you anyway. Here, they got something on me. Here, listen, tell me. Go on, just tell me. No, I'm afraid I'm not allowed to. I can't tell you any more. It's not about the 40... What about the 40 elephants? <laughs> consequences due. No one was ever charged with murder, but one by one, the 40 elephants were hunted down. And today, they are no more than a terrible memory to fellow criminals, and another of the secrets of Scotland Yard. If the lady is a cook, she is a versatile one. In the Yard's records are the dossiers of quite a number of women who have turned to burglary and who have become quite expert at the craft. There was one who, caught red-handed, blandly confessed to having committed more than 300 burglaries in the area surrounding the small town on the outskirts of the capital where she lived with her husband, a most respectable artisan. She'd lived in that area all her life, and to all intents and purposes was just an average, hard-working housewife, taking great pride in her little home, shopping with her neighbours every day, paying her bills, and having apparently no interest in life other than the daily round of the industrious and contented woman of the suburbs. I've got to go now, Mrs. Bain. It's been so nice having a little chat with you. Would I be seeing you at the bridge club tonight? No, I'm afraid not. I've got a job to do. And what a job. Not only burglars, but blackmailers and smashing grab raiders have all been women. One of the most dangerous types of women criminal is the one who poses as a domestic servant. She'll produce fake references, get a job, stay a few days, and then decamp with every scrap of jewellery she can lay hands on. There was one woman, finally brought to book by the yard, the 33-year-old mother of four children who made as much as a thousand a year by slick work of this kind. Every one of the women who employed her joined in describing her as the model domestic servant. Another type of criminal activity in which women specialize is that of the hotel thief. Here's the story of one of the cleverest of them. Um, you have a reservation for Mrs. Bia Plunkett. Just one moment, please. Oh, yes. A single room with sitting room and bathroom? That's right. I wrote you that I particularly like that corner suite on the third floor. I've had it before. Yes, and you're very lucky. We can fix that on the third floor, all right? Just the room you asked for. Thank you. I've not many bags, but I'm afraid they're rather heavy. They certainly were heavy, but little did the page who staggered with them for the lift know that all they contained was a collection of scrap iron. Mrs. Vera Plunkett had obviously not come to stay. Late that evening, on the corridor by the lift on the third floor, one of the roommates opened the door of an unoccupied suite. Oh! 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 Now, everybody, please keep calm. Keep calm. There's absolutely no cause for alarm. A small fire was discovered on the third floor and has already been put out. You're all quite safe to turn to your rooms now, quite safe. Will everybody please go back to their rooms? There's no further cause for alarm. Well, I tell you, somebody been in our room. Oh, look. My dear, okay. Look at this wardrobe. Oh, my pearls! <laughs> Plunkett had disappeared. She'd met an extremely attractive double, arson and theft. For a long time, this little gamble paid off very well, until one day... Mm. You have some reservations for me, uh, Mrs. Hardy Forsyth. Uh, just one moment, please. Oh, yes, Mrs. Hardy Forsyth. Uh, here we are. Oh, and there's a gentleman to see you. But, uh, I'm not expecting anyone. Uh, he's been waiting some time. Good morning, Mrs. Hardy Forsyth. But, uh, I, I don't know you. I know you. 
I'm from Scotland Yard. Mrs. Bill Plunkett, maybe ask Mrs. Hardy Forsyth, had, like so many other crooks, become careless. She'd written the same letter once too often, and an alert receptionist, plus the records of Scotland Yard, did the rest. Mrs. Hardy Forsyth is now registered at an hotel which she won't be leaving in a hurry. Perhaps the cleverest of all women confidence tricksters was a woman crook who specialised in working with a conjurer as a confederate. Her method was to persuade a man to allow her to tell him his fortune. If you'll just place your hand in the tail before me. That's right. Take no notice of anything. I'm going to dim the light. Abdul, my assistant, will be standing over there by the door, and I want you to look into my eyes and concentrate. Above all things, concentrate. That'll be easy, though. I can concentrate on you all day. <laughs> that won't be necessary. The seance only lasts 15 minutes. Oh, of course, you can have a second seance if you like. Let's take first things first, love. Abdul, dim the lights. Very good, ma'am. Now look into my eyes and concentrate. Think of nothing but me. Tell me about yourself. Well, I... Uh, no, no. Let me talk first. Listen to me. Look into my eyes. Think of nothing else. Concentrate. was over and the victim had gone home, you'd find the contents of his pockets considerably lighter than before. Abdul had done a spot of concentrating, and his conjuring tricks had proved remarkably successful. If I had to say in one word the quality which makes women criminals the hardest of all to catch, I'd say it was nerve. Take this case. A suburban householder returned to his home one evening, opened the front door quietly, and quite unsuspecting, walked into his dining room to find... What's going on here? Oh, who are you? Oh, please. Please don't tell the police. Well, what are you up to? What's that you've got in your hand? It's a chisel. Well, I can see that. You're trying to break open that cupboard, eh? Yes. I don't know what the world's coming to when women start breaking into houses. I'll have to give him in charge, you know. Oh, no. No, please. Please don't do that. No use. Oh, you don't understand. I've never done it before. It's only because of Mary. Who's Mary? It's my daughter. She's only eight. Oh, where's your husband? Oh, I don't know. He left me years ago. With no money and I owe the rent. Oh, it's so awful. There was nobody to turn to, so I did this. How old are you? Oh, I'm 19. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't know what I'd say. I mean, I'm 26. I don't believe it. I don't believe a word. Oh, it's true. It's true. I swear it's true. If only you'd let me go just this once, I'd promise I'd go home to my uncle. He lives in the country. Well, why didn't you go home before? I wanted this last chance to get a job in London. That's why I had to pay the rent. Well, I suppose I can't help feeling sorry for you, but... I'm going to let you go if you promise me you'll never see him again. Oh, yes, I promise. Oh, I can't thank you enough. All right. Come along with me. Now, when I open this front door and say goodnight to you, I don't ever want to hear from you again. And remember your promise. Oh, yes, all right. Oh, I'll take the bag with me. I left it here. All right. Now, get along with you. Good night, sir. And God bless you. Good night. Oh, well, it's a Christian thing to do, I suppose. Opportunity of telling you some more of the secrets of Scotland Yard.